the lifestyle's horrible. I was told that the divorce rate was over 200%. A lot of folks look and say, oh, the surgeon's always in the operating room, he's always at the hospital. We have a probably misconception about what is a lifestyle of surgeons. In fact, we have done a lot about that. And it's true, we work long hours, but I'll tell you, my family has always been my priority. I make it home just about every night to put my kids to bed. Your lifestyle as a surgeon is what you make it. Whether you go into academics or private practice, it literally is what you make it. Really, surgery, you're, you're often the last resort, and, and there's something about that that I found appealing. I mean, every day you have an opportunity to make a difference in someone's life. You diagnose the problem, and you get to fix the problem. I think it's the only branch of medicine that actually can do something and see a change right away. That's really a powerful thing, and uh, you can't do that unless you're a surgeon. How long you could stay and how hard you could work were your badges of honor for surgery residency training. Those were probably not the best way to train as surgeons. I think that the 80-hour work week is one of the single greatest gifts to surgery. The interns now are able to go home and see their families, see their wives. I think it's a great, great asset for them. Really, surgical training is not a passive thing. It's an active thing. We go after the training. Mentoring it just about makes or breaks a career. Without someone who has a little bit of a bird's eye view of the different kinds of career opportunities that are available to you, it's easy to get lost. And it's not just about being technically a, a surgeon, but also how to conduct yourself, how to be professional, uh, how to be a better communicator, all those things that you can, you can pick up from a mentor. I think the multifaceted aspects of academic medicine were what drew me and I always thought I had something I had to give back. I love teaching. I love teaching residents and medical students. It's standing across the OR table uh, with a resident, letting them do what they're able to do, showing them what they're not able to do. If you do that, you'll have fewer times fall off, and if fewer times fall off, the operation goes better. I can only do so much, but I can train 100 people to do the same thing. The idea that I could be driving to work and come up with a new idea and actually take that to the laboratory and act upon it is very appealing. When I chose a career in surgery, I have been exposed to this environment where surgeons not only operate on patients and take care of their problems and, and help them get better, but are also contributing uh, by doing research uh, and advancing the field and coming up with the next big breakthrough. Uh, there's always a lot of new discovery going on in all aspects, and you're a part of that acquisition of new knowledge. It's going to push our field forward. The diversity of our population uh, is something that everybody has to reckon with. I think one of the challenges of our field is to try to make our field attractive to a diverse group of people. Historically and traditionally, surgery has been a man's area within medicine. 3% of all surgeons in this country are black. As time goes on, I think there are more and more women in surgery. When you're sitting there in the trauma bay, you don't know who's going to come in the door. You don't know what their background's going to be. I think that the more people that you have with more different backgrounds within your field, the more ready you are to be able to relate to and understand those patients that come in. I do think, though, that beyond medical school, there can be some maybe perceived barriers in the sense that you look around and you don't see anyone who looks like you, that you may not be able to reach uh, the heights that you wish to reach. And so I think it's important and incumbent on someone in, in my position to make sure that I say to any student that it can be done. I love this job, don't get me wrong. I, I, I love it. You know, I get up in the morning and I'm happy about it. But I like being outside the hospital too. Death and disease and all those things that we deal with on a daily basis can be demanding. It's unexpected. You can't schedule it in um, because our families and quite frankly our society depend on us to be there. Uh, therefore, you have to be very creative and persistent in making sure that your family doesn't get pushed to the side. I don't start until 9 o'clock because I'm taking my daughter to school. Noah calls and says, can you start at 7.30? I say, no, actually, I can't. I have a scheduling conflict. 
If your children and your family relationship is important to you, then you can fit that into the broad scheme. We have a nine-month-old son who I see plenty of. Alzheimer's works 80%, has every Tuesday off, and spends time with Aiden. It's also not different than any other professional job in that sense. That you certainly have time to be home with your family. And again, it's a matter of making that a priority. It's really a fascinating, fast-paced, fast-moving field. If you don't keep up, you might as well retire. We're in a very, very exciting point in time. Obviously, we've put a lot more time into minimally invasive surgery. One thing in particular that's being done at our institution is a natural orifice surgery. I can train my residents in the simulation laboratory on really cool things that look like video games. We're excited by the new thing. We're gadget people. We like these things. New technologies are, are changing the way we view things and changing the way we treat patients. So uh, surgery will be different 10 years from now. It's part of the, the allure of, uh, of this field. Every day, I am thankful that I became a surgeon. I went through nine years of training uh, to become a pediatric surgeon, and there wasn't one day where I thought of doing something else. When I wake up in the morning, I actually, I know that I'm going to work, but I've never for one day thought of my work as work. I think I get that confirmation every single day uh, that I've made the right choice. I'm so glad that I get to do this every day. I'm so glad every morning, very early in the morning, that I'm getting up to do what I'm getting up to do.